I, I, I do just remember that we finished the film and we sent it off to New York and they shoved it in a theater in Times Square somewhere. But before doing so, Bob Shea of New Life apparently didn't like the ending we had. And I can't remember what that was, but we had some sort of ending. So they just locked the ending off. And that was it, you know, bang, I don't know, they were standing in a field somewhere and something, oh, the end. So then Bob got on the phone to the producers and I said, well, you know, we need an ending. They said, well, we gave you an ending. Well, all right, we'll do another one. So um, I think the effects guys came in and we did, did this, sort of, this, this sort of thing, that uh, placenta-like thing jumps out or something and bleh, <laughs> this, this ludicrous scene. Another completely off-the-wall, pointless scene, uh, 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 as I recall. Um, and that's all I know. There may have been other endings. I only shot two, I think. <laughs> Moving on. I can tell you it's some sort of life form. Another fine motion picture. Yes, the genesis of that film was that I needed a job. I needed a job. I needed a picture. And amazingly, I had managed, through some quirk of contract, to hang on to the rights to the title extra, the word extra. I didn't own the script or the story or anything, but I owned the title. It could not be anything to do with the first story. So we took it to mean extra, means extraterrestrial, so it's something to do with like, it's like having a title like The Twilight Zone, so I think, you know, you just slap out any, a, anything that, that, that is, a, you know, something to do with fantasy and horror and science fiction and that kind of stuff, you know. So along came, you know, some Canadian guys and um, these reprehensible people stuck this script together and I signed on the dotted line and ran off to Canada and shot this thing, uh, which is truly, a, it, it really is a piece of garbage. I mean, it is absolutely, these people who made this thing You know, they define artlessness, really. Plus, I think it has to be blamed on me, <clears throat> is that one Jan Michael Vincent was brought onto the picture and, and, and given gainful employment and paid quite a lot of money, as I recall. Is that what I can do for you? We were all out there, you know, doing our best, you know, with these lovely Canadian kids. I mean, they were all very young on the crew, you know. They were just great. You, see, you say, um, could we please have a track from here to, and then woof, it's, it's, the track's laid, everyone's ready, and panting, ready to go. They're lovely people, you know, absolutely lovely. And this Vincent shows up, and he didn't give a damn about any of us. He didn't know his lines. He didn't know what the scenes were when we were doing them. I would have to stand there and read his lines to him and he would say them back to me. I did what had to be done. He didn't know what was going on. You know, I would stand behind the camera and, and I would stand in the correct eye line for, you know, for him to look in the right direction. And that was how we, uh, how we made that uh, picture. He really had no idea what was going on. And you know, I, um, I would feel sorry for him, you know, because he was such a mess. I would feel sorry for him, but we were all trying, you know. Even though it's just a silly little monster movie, we were trying. It was our picture. It was our picture, you know. Uh, he just, he just didn't give a damn. He didn't give a damn. So, I, uh, I didn't like him. You don't understand. It's strange, though, because I remember sitting there watching XO2 with, with, with a friend of mine, also, a friend of mine telling me afterwards, you know, saying, you know, yes, it is a dreadful film. He said, it's strange because Jan Michael actually does have screen presence, even through all his problems, shall we say. He does. You look at him. I don't know why, but you do. Of course, you can't understand him. He's been kicked in the throat. 
you know. But, uh, the third extra, I think, was, is, 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 I think it's not so bad, actually. You know, I think it's not so bad. I mean, I wish I could remake it. You know, you always want to tear it, tear it down off the projector and start recutting it and anything you do, really, or I do. Um, but uh, uh, anything that's wrong with that one is my fault. Entirely my fault. Whatever weaknesses it has, it has many weaknesses. But again, you know, we were all trying, and it was our little picture. But it really was our little picture this time. We didn't have, you know, executives and things. It was a completely independent uh, film. So, so I have a, an, a, the affection in my heart for Extra 3, but not for Extra 2 at all. A little bit of affection for, for Extra 1, because uh, it was a better experience, you know. I, I think I last saw the first extra all the way through about about ten years ago. I think I watched it after. When was it that one? No, no. I think it was Extra Two. I watched Extra One about ten years ago, and I I haven't seen Extra Two for a long time. I did watch Extra Two though. Um, uh, the beginning of it with Joe Bob Briggs introducing it, and he's, he's sitting there, you know, in his cowboy hat, whatever he says. Well, says, tonight we are really in the toilet. <laughs> Extra two. <laughs> you know, people crawling around in the air conditioning ducts. Yeah. So I saw a little bit of it. I usually watch these things until I see my title <laughs> come up, and then I'm uh, off, you know, off. There's Extra, the dreaded Extra. Watch out for further editions coming soon to a screen near you. I don't know, what have we done? I've trashed Jan Michael Vincent. Good now. Is he still alive? <laughs>